Hello and welcome. I'm Luca De Rio, and in this short tutorial, I would like to show you how IS Lite are working inside 3ds Max 2017. So I prepared a very basic scene. Um, part of the scene is provided by 3D Workshop, and this is a free model, so you can download and uh, use uh, the file. The lights are uh, not created there, so I created this um, light setup for uh, the purpose of this recording. And, uh, well, you can see that the camera is uh, recording the scene from this uh, position. We are parallel to the floor, and we have some uh, studio light here, one on the right, one on the left, so mm, actually they are kind of key light and, uh, and fill light. Plus, I have some uh, decoration for the light. Also, they are used uh, for, uh, for emitting light as well, but they are mostly for decoration. And I would like to focus on the light here on the, um, on the wall, on the, on the back of our scene. So, uh, 3ds Max 2017, as you can see, has different set of icons. I'm using 3ds Max since a long time, so I uh, know the position of all of them. While, um, in the same time, I'm a little bit confused when I'm checking because, uh, you know, we are used with the, with the layout and with the color of the icon. So it takes just a few minutes to, to feel um, home with this user interface. What is important is um, that we have a new uh, renderer. So we have a new software for processing our pictures. Uh, and I'm talking about a built-in uh, renderer. And I'm speaking about this ART render, this ART renderer is a ray trace CPU based uh, um, very quick and flexible uh, and as well as simple to use uh, render engine. If you click here you can notice that mental ray and i ray they uh, they are not present in the list it's just they got uh, uh, kicked out from the installer so you can install them as a kind of third party um, software and of course you can install V-Ray, Maxwell Render, uh, Corona Renderer and so on. So you can have the benefit of all the uh, Renderer engine as usual. So talking about um, the goal of this recording, I would like to experiment this art renderer. I actually already did, so I checked here the various settings and I leave you the pleasure to, um, to change them here. It's quite simple. It it somehow feels like uh, IRA for certain reason, if it, even if this one is uh, totally CPU based. And, uh, and I can show you the materials. So this basic part, I'm using the, the standard material editor. You can also use the slate material editor. You can change the mode here, you know. And in the first material, I'm using the Autodesk generic physical material. I want to show you because this is something new. So if you select here in the materials, you can find the scanline material and the general. So now we have this um, generic purpose um, material where there is the physical material. And uh, just one tip is that when you are creating this kind of material that is here, it doesn't feel like the Autodesk generic material. So let me change it. Um, physical material. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it was not the same material. Um, it's even better. So I can show you uh, what you should be aware of. The, when you create this material by default, the user interface, uh, again, um, is something that I invite you to explore. But here you have base color and reflection. So whatever color you decide to use, uh, let's say, for example, red, um, you may notice that the material is a glossy red. So if you are experimenting with the light as I do with a matte material, um, you have to move here from standard to advanced, uh, change the reflection amount to zero, and then roll back to uh, standard if you if you want uh, this um, this uh, this feature. Of course, I don't want to use uh, the red, and I also don't want to use the pure white. You know, for uh, uh, energy preserve uh, for the preservation of the energy inside the scene. So this kind of white is uh, good. I can assign to all my scene. And OK, now everything is uh, white. I can change here in the default shading. And we can have a nice preview. I have to say that it's 
very very fast and very quick to to process the images. Uh, of course, this is not the the, the final image. Um, but I need to start my render to see something. So very quickly, here I was experimenting before, and uh, this is not the best render of my life. It's just something that I'm doing here to uh, to introduce uh, this uh, this IS light. So let's talk about the IS light. The IS light is uh, um, light created, or better, emitted by this uh, photometric light. You can find them here in the photometric. You may notice that we have now target light, free light, and sun positioner. That is something new and introduced in this 2017 version of 3ds Max. So in the target light, I took my time to place the lights inside the scene, and then from the modify here, I, I'm going to change the various settings. So what is important about the this photometric IS light is the distribution web, the photometric uh, web. Uh, so how this light is, uh, how this energy is pushed out from the light emitter. And um, here is the the point. You need to use an external file. So I produced a couple of uh, IS light. And you can find here the wide and the narrow. So they are two different files that, uh, as you may see, they are .is. So they are real photometric light and uh, they are imported. So if I want the narrow, as uh, the name suggests, this very narrow cone, if I click here and I change with my wide light, you can find here a preview on how it's going to look. And you see that the, the web is a little bit different. It's wider in this position. So wide and I go back to my narrow one. Um, these uh, files, well, they can be downloaded for free from internet. You just need to search for them, and uh, usually the um, fixture manufacturer they are uh, providing IS uh, uh, files, photometric files for for your images. I use this software, Real IS, that is kind of comfortable because uh, if you need a very narrow light, you can uh, design, you can really craft your your light. So if it's going to be narrow, it's something like this. Uh, if, if it's something very wide, it's something maybe like this. Or I can have something in between. So this is not used uh, to have, um, um, let's say, real manufactured light. So I'm not producing a light like a Philips light, for example. Uh, but in the same time, I can have a light uh, that is generating energy exactly in with the shape that I uh, need. And if I feel bored, I can click here on Surprise Me, and he is uh, trying to <laughs> impress me with, um, with a random preset. I, also, I noticed that here 90 degrees is not pushing too high, the intensity. So I don't risk to have a, you know this 90 degree light, I suppose it's 89 degrees. Uh, too strong. Also, we have the advanced user interface where uh, we can change uh, the lumen flux for, for example, 750 lumens. Um, the power is not so interesting as feature. And uh, here we have information about the candles and the looks according to the distance of the light. This is kind of uh, advanced uh, and uh, personally, I'm not using so much this one because I am um, creating my IS light, I'm firing my render, and if the image is too strong, I change here the lumen directly inside 3ds Max. So that's not a problem. When I decide to save here, I can save my IS light. It's going to save on the desktop. I click select, and uh, well, as every software, he's going to save the light here with a real IS. So this is the software in use. When I have my lights here, just a couple of uh, words about well, if I'm able to select this light. Okay. So on the lights, I have area shadows. You can decide to use a uh, different uh, shadow generator. I quite, I'm quite comfortable with Area Shadow or V-Ray Shadow. Personally, I mostly use uh, V-Ray in my productions, but um, well, you know, the user interface somehow is the same, so you have to pick here V-Ray uh, Shadows or Shadow Map. And I am, I'm emitting the light from a disk. 
I prefer the disk instead of the point. You know, the point is something, uh, um, well, very small, while the disk uh, is something that has um, a small area, it's like a real spotlight, and uh, this disk is going to affect uh, um, the shape of our emitter as well of the uh, shadows that we are creating. So what I'm trying to say is that these shadows here um, under the, um, the table on the floor they're going to be soft and smooth. So, this is, uh, well, this is it. This is how to um, assign IS profiles to your photometric light inside 3ds Max 2017. Thank you for watching.